Okay. Hello, and uh, welcome back to this Zen Embodiment channel. I'm Corey, and today I have the the Rinzai um, Facebook group forum moderators, and um, Mado Moroshi, uh, Genryo, BLT Jones, Jim Tabor, and uh, Matt Wagner, Daiho. Um, welcome, everybody. Okay. Good to see you. Good to yeah, see good you. to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you. We wanted to say, you know, Happy New Year to everyone and um, wish everyone a Happy New Year. And we wanted to just come and, and share ourselves a little bit on, uh, on this, this little call and um, maybe talk a little bit about uh, what the Rinzai Forum is and, and why, we, why we put a lot of time into it, especially Mado. And um, I think part of it is just to say that um, we've all done a lot of strong training. And um, in that um, deep training, there's a real reverence for the practice and it being authentically put out there. And um, so in that reverence, I think um, we often want to make sure it's not being presented falsely. And so I think sometimes that might come across as um, sharpness or intensity. And I think um, it's more that we love practice and we wanna really share that there's a depth to it that I think um, we want people to know about. And so um, anyway, I wanted to start off with that today. You know, I think the other thing is that the sharpness and intensity though, we don't mean to direct it at people per se. That comes out from our practice background too. Right. If you do enough sanzen, uh, you, you kind of get used to a way of interacting or talking with others that cuts through the crap. So we, we bring that to the forum sometimes. And I can understand sometimes that's off-putting to folks who see it as somehow imp impolite or impolitic. And we certainly don't mean it that way. Um, to us, we feel like we're, be we're being very uh, uh, kind with each other when, when we talk that way, because we trust each other to be honest and to say what we really believe. Uh, so, uh, but it's maybe sometimes too hard to, for me to remember that some folks don't have that experience of uh, sitting across from a teacher where that's how you learn to be and to interact. Uh, so we always say the forum is not a sanzen room, a doksan room, but we can't help it <laughs> sometimes. So I, I want to start by apologizing for that a little bit to some folks if they felt it was too much. Yeah, I, I love what you said, Corey, about it, it being something precious. I mean, that's the way I felt because um, I had this amazing experience in my training. And then when I left Japan like 20 years ago, that kind of felt uh, like that was impossible to find again. You know, like, oh, that was then, that was there. And now I have to settle for something else. You know, that was that was then. And then coming across Mado and Korenji and you guys in the forum, it really makes it seem like um, you know, it is accessible. It's still around and it's something that can be shared and it's really exciting and really precious. So yeah, there's a, you kind of protect it a little bit because it's, <laughs> it is so precious. And I'd say to add to that, um, uh, Buddhism and Zen is often, especially in the Western world, known as a compassionate kind of a practice and oftentimes in the west i think our idea of compassion is being very nice and kind whereas compassion sometimes is is uh being scolded sometimes because you're doing something wrong or incorrectly and and that's been my background with training too is that it's always been while it's not pleasant um i've always taken it as a compassionate uh approach for my teachers when they set me on the right path and and as you said, Corey, sometimes we're, we might be a little sharp. And I think that's just part of our compassion coming out in terms of um, letting people know of the, the way th we things, the way that we see that things should be in terms of training and our experiences. And, um, and as a parent, I'm sure that you guys that are parents, sometimes your compassion is not to be nice. It's, it's to correct and and it's also to, to set them on the right path too. So I see that as our role as well as, as moderators. Yeah, I would also add, I think the forum acts as a, 
an interesting intersection of experience too. Uh, touching on what um, Gennaro was just talking about, having gone to Japan and had this uh, very profound experience. And uh, all of us having done that, that deep training, we're coming at it from this perspective of um, integrating, in a way, integrating that experience into daily life and into community with others, and in a sense, communion with others too. And so, you know, there's a great number of people in the forum that are very experienced, very, um, uh, very profound individuals and very good teachers that are uh, per participating or at least observing what's going on in the forum that are bringing their own experience into that. And then you have the, uh, all of the new people that have no idea what's going on and are hungry to, to figure that out and to discover what that means for themselves. So uh, it's this in very interesting intersection of, of experience of the very experienced and the not so experienced and how we meet in the middle and uh, how we ask those fundamental questions and how we accord ourselves with uh, those questions and our responses are very interesting in that regard. Yeah, what an amazing um, collection of people do come into the forum from time to time. I mean, lots of new people, but people like uh, Dosho, for example, and Guo Gu chimes in, uh, not so often, but occasionally, and uh, Gregory Wonderwheel and Carol Spooner. I mean, we've got these amazing people who give of themselves there. Um, selfishly, I'm attached to the form as much as I am because I'm constantly learning something from all those folks. So it's just an incredible repository. I, I, I would really love for people to understand how precious it is to have that, to have access to people like that so easily. That's a good point in that um, I learn a lot more from the forum than I actually do moderating, I think. Um, I know that every once in a while I'll chime in with something, but for the most part, I'm there reading and learning and, and we have all these great people to learn from. It's really, really wonderful on, on the moderator side of things, being able to see all that stuff. Yeah, and also this group learning from you guys in our behind the scenes epic discussions, <laughs> which can never be published on the forum. But <laughs> no. we learn so much from you guys and from you guys who trained at Sogenji, for example, uh, Jim and I trained together for a long time, but he has his perspective, which is really interesting to me. Daiho's experience is that just, uh, even this group, this moderator group, uh, what, what an amazing resource. So I'm really grateful for that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's, it's often like this, um, this kind of hidden gear that, that develops in you and um, in the training and then um, and then you, you don't really know what to do with it. Often when you, when you leave that, that intense training, you, you really want to offer something, but you're not really sure how to, and, um, you, it doesn't really, you're not sure where it's going to land often. And, and so, um, learning that part of the integrating is learning how to skillfully do that and to actually, okay, I can, I can offer this and that there's such a, a real joy in being able to offer that well. And I think that's like a big uh, fruition of deep training is that you, you, you're almost, you're called then to be able to offer yourself in a, in a, in a way that's uh, helpful. And uh, I think the forum is, is really uh, wonderful for, I think, um, for that. You get to kind of be a, a senpai or um, someone who's been around a while, they can kind of help a little bit. That's actually a real gift, I think, to the training people. You can be helpful. That's a real gift. Yeah, that's a good, really good point. I mean, something that I, I selfishly love about the forum is that it forces me to, you know, there'll be a discussion and I'll have some faint glimmer of like, I kind of know what's what they're talking about. And it and I want to be able to engage and like forcing me to be able to put that into words is something I would never, you know, have the opportunity to do. But and it's hard. It's really difficult to 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 reflect on what I'm actually experiencing and thinking and put it into words and put it into words in a way that makes sense to someone just through the forum you know it's it's amazing it's hard work and it's amazing to see people who do it really really well <laughs> like I, do. I know <laughs> the forum for me is teacher training in, in one sense in that regard specifically that you're discussing Kenyo. i mean uh, same thing someone will 
even talk about some basic Buddhist concept like a dependent origination, for example. And I have to think, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> I better go brush up on that because I forgot something or I'm not clear about some point. Uh, so it becomes it becomes a practice, not just a job of moderating something. Really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting how uh, those people or those of us that uh, uh, were in monasteries and, and training centers and various life um, directions took us away for periods of time. How uh, you realize you you can never really leave. It always sucks you back in, and uh, this training sucks you back in. No matter, you know, based on various experiences, however much you want to deny that, <laughs> it won't let you go. And so somehow we find ourselves all back here on this forum and moderating. It's kind of reassuring in a in a weird way. Yeah. Among the strange people who understand you. <laughs> we all have the same brand on the back, right? You guys got that, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> Similar species, right? <laughs> yeah, but for what it's worth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's another one of the wonderful things about the forum for me is that in my, you know, I'm a stay-at-home parent. I'm busy like all the time, and it's but this is something I can do like in ten minutes here, five minutes there whenever I have a chance and I can kind of keep my thumb on it and uh, uh, participate. And it's, it's a, like Daya was saying, you know, and, I, and it allows me to do that. And it's something I'm so grateful for, you know, to be able to still engage and have something to offer and to be part of it. And you see connections with people that you would never have before. So many people are coming out from so many different walks of life and in countries and life situations and uh, you get to meet with them and explore with them and then even meet them in person when they start to come to the same practice centers you are and that would never have happened before and what a what a weird thing what all over the world thing. yeah it's crazy yeah yeah and even even stuff that could develop into really significant developments in the future like i think of uh for example ogawa daigo ozawa daigo san the uh, Jushoku of Tokozenji, you know, priest in you know Kamakura area era, who recently got involved on the forum, posted that amazing video about the uh, practice, the uh, repentance and confession practice. Um, because of that, I like to go meet him. You know, that could end up being a, a really valuable friendship or a resource for us. Already, he's been a resource for amazing information for us. So, I don't think I would ever have the chance to connect with someone like that if it wasn't for this group. So, yeah, I, I have my qualms about Facebook like many people do, but uh, at the same time, I have to really be grateful that we have some format like this that we can connect with each other. And it's really, I think it's really heartening. Like today there was a, someone posted and at, at the end, they said, um, you know, I hesitated to even post this question, but I'm, I'm glad I did because there were so many great answers. You know, that is just really heartening to hear that. And something I think about sometimes is that for every person that comments or posts, there's four, five, six, you know, how many are silently following? Because I know I lurked for like a year before I got involved. You know, I mean, those people are out there and it, you never know what kind of impact it's having. I think we sucked you in, didn't we? It very much did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a conspiracy to do that, if I recall. <laughs> I sensed you're lurking, <clears throat> sucked you in. Yeah, and, and you know, something I was going to um, kind of bounce off of what Genio said is that uh, throughout the day, you know, I, I work a regular nine to five and I try to jump on the forum when I can, but it's unfortunately because of the busyness of my job, it doesn't happen often, but it is a nice thread to keep practice going throughout the day. Um, just keeping that in mind and keeping my own practice and, and checking in from time to time. So it, and I don't, I'm assuming a majority of the people on the forum are also have day jobs and they're able to do that as well. So hopefully that helps them as well in that sense. Yeah. Great. Well, what are, um, one other thing we were thinking of talking about was 
what are our, our plans for practice for this year? Anything we wanted to bring up about that? New Year's, New Year's resolutions. Okay. <laughs> we, we talk Stop about doing those resolutions? a long time. Stop doing those a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I think we said that we, we all said that we hate those, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, how about you each again? Well, I I just I'm really uh, excited. Uh, I feel really blessed right now. I'm I'm able to start to offer myself and leading some really interesting groups right now that there's a whole kind of community going online and um, it's, it's, it's really been, been fun and rewarding and I get to kind of just be kind of a nice guy, kind of it's non-hierarchical so I don't have to be the end all. That's really nice for me. Um, it's a bunch of really um, differing people all over the world and lots of experience and then some beginners. So I'm just excited to try to practice with people through this. That's what I'm doing this year. I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's been really fun. And um, it's, you know, I'm doing it all the time. I was just doing it just now before the call. So it's very exciting, really fun group. Uh, Genrio is a part of that. It's been really fun. Yeah, it's incredibly supportive. And it's really, it's really solidified my home practice. It's like, you know, I thought I had a home practice, but no, yeah, when, once you have that support and that regular, would it, you know, it means something to somebody else that you are there every day. It really helps, it's amazing. And it's been really fun because um, then we've got like a kind of a, a dialogue with, with Mado. So, you know, okay, you're doing this practice with me and then maybe go, you know, dip into the kind of big leagues and go, go train for a while full on. I think that's really exciting. So, um, that's been fun to kind of um, have a, that kind of um, exchange where I can send them to maybe Koringi and, and they can really dive in. And um, so anyway, it's, it's been a whole synergy. It's very exciting. Yeah, I've been grateful also to have your stuff to recommend to people to also, you know, even some of the Unsui of Koringi uh, who can really benefit from that kind of practice that you're doing. Um, I think it's been tremendously useful for them. So they don't have much time. <laughs> so I don't let them get away too often. But right. Yeah, what a great resource. I think the way that we can support each other in all our mutual activities is really quite remarkable. Yeah. I'd like to meet up in person in the new year. That's yeah, cool. we got to make that yeah. happen. That's a good resolution right there. I think that's boom, done. <laughs> Let's do it. After the cold weather, weather breaks, okay. let's meet up someplace. Great. Um, should we all go to Korenji or should we? Um... Come, come. Okay. Come. I mean, I'll come see you guys anywhere too. And uh, again, you're now you, we, you're located in Pennsylvania. So if I find myself driving back and forth to New Jersey again, I'll be sure to stop through. But, yeah, right on. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's. If I have a resolution, it's to finally get uh, a local group going. I've been tr trying for two years now in <laughs> between moves and pandemics and at a glacial pace, but I think this is the year we'll get it going. Fantastic. Yeah, my resolution is, is along the same lines. Uh, our Madison group, which is the city center satellite of Corangi is, is um, it was on hold for much of the COVID time, understandably, and as things have started to open up again, people are coming back, and uh, there seems to be uh, a lot of really good excitement about that. So things things are growing, and, and uh, uh, people are um, are just kind of kind of coming out of the woodwork, which is a really nice thing to see. So uh, thinking about uh, how to uh, support that and. Um, um, Give it more structure. Give it, give it more, uh, give it more time. Give it more support for those people that are coming. So how to expand, um, uh, expand schedule a little bit. How to get people um, into practice a little bit more. The people that are coming. How to uh, uh, support them through um, different 
different trainings of the roles, like the monastic roles, the, the different instrumentation, the rituals that we do, get people involved a little bit and to take, uh, uh, to feel more empowered and have an ownership of their practice and think that it's something that they can, uh, they can take these ritual elements home and do them home and see how it supports their practice and start to have a feeling of integrating that a little bit and bringing that practice off the cushion. So that's been interesting. Um, playing around with different different schedules and timings and stuff like that and juggling with what works here, what works with Karanji, what's not falling on, on a holiday and all, all of that. So it's been good. I'm really I'm I'm excited for it. It'll be a good year. Yeah, I have uh, I have quite a few things I want to try to accomplish this next year. And one of them is I'm hoping that um, my Sangha, Dayu Zenji in Chicago, we'll be able to sit together again. We've been doing online sits for almost two years now, since last March or April. Um, so I'm hoping to attend, if not session there, then definitely session at uh, Koringi at some point. Um, and then somewhat related to the Zen world, but more of my martial art world is uh, just trying to get this Aikido Dojo uh, up and running out in uh, my neck of the woods. Um, started to, just like Genryo, just the last two years, um, just not been working out, unfortunately. It's tried starting this at the wrong time in terms of the pandemic, but I feel like 2022, uh, kind of like uh, Meta Roshi's talk the other day about uh, the transition from the year of the ox into the year of the tiger. I think it's time for all of us to just kind of push through no matter what and just get it done. Um, so I'm feeling I'm feeling that that push this year. I think the last year it was more of maintaining and uh, it was a really great time for my own personal practice. But I think it's time to to branch out and get get some more people involved. And through that dojo, I'd like to have a sitting group. Um, certainly some more embodied practices and and some of the uh, do and ho and things like that that we do through our uh, our Zen practice. But so a couple of things on the plate in terms of, uh, of those things. So I'm looking forward to that in the next year. Well, my resolution, um, I announced it to my students here was this year I wanna work less hard. <laughs> Have things be more personally sustainable, but uh, yeah, something's cooking. Something's starting to cook around here. And, um, and we have a session next week, for example, beginner session, we build it at. So different schedule than usual. We have 35 people signed up. That's really amazing for an in-person event. So uh, I want to find a way to sustain that growth and still take care of my uh, my health and my personal life and all of that in a way that I maybe haven't the past few years. But this, this whole process of starting a new monastery has been amazing because I had this idea that it would just kind of land fully functional. And it's not like that at all. There's layers that you have to add every year. Uh, this coming year, or 2022, we will finally have a full ceremonial schedule, you know, with a you know, Bodhidharma's birthday, Buddha's Nirvana day, all of those kinds of ceremonies, along with our Sashin schedule. Now we have Sashin in Europe. Um, I feel like this is the year that something is fully formed or matures in some basic way after the past, uh, you know, decade of work. So it's kind of really exciting, along with the Madison group too, as Daiho was saying. And uh, my other thing for this year is to get my next book rolling. And I have a proposed idea, which I'll run past you folks privately <laughs> to get your input. But I think I got it solidified. So yeah, it's going to be an amazing busy year. I, even though the the Tiger Year hasn't officially started yet because the Lunar uh, New Year is not here yet. It feels like something shifted already. Something energetically started to change. So uh, ready to ride that, ride that Tiger. I was wondering, um, <clears throat> because it seems like the, the Zen culture in the West seems to be aging so much. I was wondering about, you know, this bringing young people in and um, maybe I was wondering if maybe some of the Aikido folks, if if that kind of lures in some younger folks, you know, they kind of get a sense of that, or or maybe if if is is Korinji Korinji seems to have a, some younger folks now, and I think that's really exciting actually. Yeah, and I don't know why. I mean, historically, uh, because of uh, Tore Sensei 
one of my late teachers, who many of you know, um, Aikido folks were the main people coming into Zen because he was also an Aikido teacher. But now the Aikido world is aging too. Yeah. Um, the last Aikido organization I belonged to, before the one I belong to now, at some point they did a, a survey of their members. And I think the median age was like in the 40s. You know, and it's only gotten older since then. So it's not like it used to be. But for some reason, yeah, Korinji were getting 20 somethings there. And I don't know why. Um, it's not because I look young. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. But it's really encouraging. The next Ango starting in April. We have two new folks coming in who are both in their 20s or young 30s. So um, that's right on. That's what we need. That's what that training is designed for, right? Yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, wow. Which is not to say the older folks are not welcome too, and we can make allowance for them, right? But uh, we need, if we want someone to really go through the full course of the training and pass it on to the next generation, we we need some folks who have a couple decades they can devote to it. Right. Uh, so that's that's makes me happy to see that happening. Right. Even the physical aspect of really being able to. Um... Uh, have a body that can can be a, a vessel for uh, you know opening up to yeah. to the training. It just it's nice to have young young bodies to do that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Interesting. At the same time, I think there's this myth that's propagated in in the Zen world that uh, uh, that the forms are too severe, that the training is too intense, it's too harsh. For Westerners, it doesn't address certain needs. It's, and I, I wonder where that comes from. Uh, but uh, at any rate, the fact that that Korinji is seeing more people and more younger people is kind of pointing out that that assumption might not be true. So these, this idea that Zen needs to um, accommodate and uh, become a little bit uh, softer and gentler. Of course, people not really even knowing you know, what, what that means. Um, clearly, that's not meeting the needs of some people, right? Some, some younger people that are really uh, desperately searching, it seems. So the fact that our numbers are growing and people are really being drawn to that uh, is encouraging. It's encouraging that, that that myth is not necessarily correct. Absolutely. That, that goes back to what I was saying earlier, I think. And they, um, you know, you hear it all the time. People are like, oh, you know, the old, that's the old way. The old way is dead. It's impossible for us now. And I'm like sitting here like, no, it's not. I, I was there. I went. I was there. I did it. It's possible. And me, you know, this, this college kid schmuck knows nothing can go and do it. You can do it. It is possible. And look, here's these people who are doing it, you know, and uh, I, yeah, it's, it's totally possible and it, it is happening. Um, so. I wonder what, what sorry, what, what do you think the, the average age of the participants in the forum is? That might be an interesting poll to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll set that up today. Yeah. Officially announced. <laughs> we'll take a poll. <laughs> It'll be interesting to, yeah, to see those results. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And you know the forum. You, know, you guys know the forum started a few years ago. Are we on our third year now? Maybe, yeah. At least two. You know, well, you know, we lose a year or two with the pandemic, so it might even be more than three years. So, it, if folks don't know, the page started out just as Corangi's basic Facebook page, and at that time, it had like four hundred members or four hundred participants, and then. Uh, you guys all more or less, Genro, you came just a little bit later, I think, but you guys all, I think Corey, you came in pretty early and Daiho and Jim, you did, but um, you know, we're up, we're get, we're gonna close in on 4,000 members soon. We've averaged about a thousand new members a year. So um, that says something, there's an interest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, I, but the age, I'd really be curious to know how old they are. We'll set that up. And you know, uh, Daniel, um, it's interesting that you say how people 
will often say, well, they, I can't do that, it's too hard, the old ways are too hard. Um, even if people are older, there are some things that we can do to allow them to still practice. They don't have to full, sit in full lotus. Um, they don't have to sit on the floor. If they sit in a chair, it's still hard to sit in a chair for a session, but, but they can still do it. Like you said, it's, I, I think that maybe one of the messages we should send to people is that just do it. Don't I hate to sound like a Nike ad, but don't think about it too much. Just jump in and, and start training and you know, things will take care of themselves and make sure that you get aligned with a legitimate teacher and they'll, they'll allow you to train as your body is, is able to. If you're 60 years old, then you train like a 60 year old. It's a lecture I had not too long ago from my own teachers. You're 40 in your 40s now, you're not in your 20s anymore. What are you doing to yourself? So I think that's an important message to send to people. And that's already an egalitarianism that does, maybe didn't exist in some of the traditional cultures. I mean, we let anyone come into the Zendo for Sashin. They don't have to sit in a separate room if they're lay people both sexes and all gender identities, living together, training together. If you need us in a chair, no problem, we'll put you in a chair. You know, that that's, we've broken those barriers down. So egalitarian doesn't mean now take the whole training and bring it down to the needs of the person who has the, you know, needs to have it adjusted most for them. Right. We give everyone the opportunity and we let them train in a way which pushes their envelope rather than some absolute envelope, right? But at the same time, like on the forum, I sometimes feel like uh, when folks hear about the others who are doing the, you know, the kind of full bore traditional training, they almost want to pull them down rather than have a reflexive feeling of joy for those people and congratulate them. And what can I do to support? I can't do that, but you doing it, that's so amazing. What do you need? Do you need long underwear? You know, I, I like it when people react that way. Um, so we have to look at ourselves sometimes, yeah, but it includes me too, um, how we project our limitations onto the training or onto other people, because of my own situation is not what I would prefer. You know, maybe that's, that's what happens sometimes with folks. Yeah. I, and I think that goes back to what Corey was saying at the beginning that for those of us who have done this kind of training, you, there, I can see how from the outside, someone might think, oh, that's, that's you having done it, that's your personality, that's something that you have done. But, at, but for the people who have done it, it's not us at all. There's this, we're like riding the tip of this great crest that going back centuries that has been able to express through us is so amazing. And it has nothing to do with, with me, you know, that I got the chance to participate in that is, is amazing. And I wanna share that, it's not, it, and and it, I, the, I think the people who dismiss it haven't experienced it all and can't fathom that. They can't see it in, in any other way other than that it's an egoistic thing that you have, that you're proud that you did that and you're whole lording it over other people, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's the complete opposite of that. Um, you're touching on something way vaster than, than your personal self. Yeah. It's a really uh, great point. I mean, just the... The, the joy and the gratefulness of being able to be a part of such a rich tradition in, in centuries and centuries of masters and say, oh man, now I have to, I have to try to live up to some of those expectations. It's humbling and at the same time, it's such a, a wonderful experience and, and just feel so lucky to be part of it. I think a lot of what happens is, um, you know, the, the Rinzai, especially maybe, it, it presents this profound challenge to us. And, uh, and what do we do with that? You know, I think um, we say, oh, that's not real. That's, um, you know, Zen is, um, who is it? That's the, who's, who's sitting, you know, or they like to kind of break it down. But then there are people who, who get that challenge and they, their whole system just lights up. And then, um, you go to a place like this in a training place and um you know it's so exciting it's so um raw and powerful and um you see oh so so if ever you think zen is sort of this um dry cerebral um 
stale um, thing. It's so the opposite of that in an actual training environment is so exciting. You feel like you're, you're, um, you are, you're floating on the tip of all this in, in sublime power. And, and so I just, I just want to like offer that to the, the forum that um, that's what it's like. It's, and so it's, um, if you ever go to a place, a Zen place, and everyone is um, sad and dark and, um, you know, dry, I would get back in the car and go because even if the form, the form is intense, the people are, uh, there's a brightness about them. They're, they're, they're feeling this, this huge legacy coming through them. And that's what's so exciting about it. And that's what we bring to the, the forum is, is that excitement about it. And we're trying to share that. That's, I think that's why we're all excited about it. Yeah, even in my own case, if it was the excitement that you kind of have, like when you watch a building demolition, <laughs> that was the kind of excitement I experienced. But it was still awesome. You know? <laughs> Look, stuff is blowing up and falling down. <laughs> oh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited that there there are young people showing up and they're full of energy and they're um, you know figuring out that they can use that um, modality of training to um, uh, you know dive into th this this deeper process and like I think that there are there are so many young people looking for ways to to be able to do that and um, I don't believe that like oh, this generation is this or that. I think that's nonsense. I have daughters and they're way more advanced than me, you know? So uh, I think that, um, you know, looking for ways to, to dive into what is life, you know, is very exciting. And I, I love that young people are going to Zen and they're using that as a way to do that. It's fantastic, I think. <laughs> what else? Did we cover everything we wanted to talk about? We had some brief ideas, but we we're mostly winging it, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. The building falling down. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think demolitions are, I, I watch those demolition videos on YouTube. I think they're awesome. You know, it's <laughs> amazing how they do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it feels to me. You know, um, Corey, as you were talking about, you know, what it's like to, to walk into or to view a really um, energetic monastic place um, and then Mita Roshi what you're saying about the, the demolition of the buildings and I come from a musical background and I know there's some people on the forum that are musicians as well and I guess um, the, the older I get the more I see all of these things just kind of intertwining the music and the, the martial arts and the, the zen stuff and and it's just really interesting when you're on stage and you're playing and you're, you know what the other guy's going to do before he even does it. And you just, and you start to, to ride the, the wave of the energy of the place that you're playing. In. And all of these things are just really churning and, and, and everything is just really cooking. And it's, it's a very similar experience. I don't want to say it's the same experience, but it's similar in that, especially when you're in Sashin and you have all these people really working hard and everybody's working it, and you get that same sense that, um everybody's in different levels everybody's in a different place but at the same time um everybody's making a real sincere effort to, to put forth uh, everything everything that they have and, and the musicians that are out there I, they, they know what that feeling is like when they're on stage and and you don't you're not there anymore it's not you it's it's the instrument and it's 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 just a really amazing experience to to live both of those lives and see that that same experience on both both ends of the spectrum in terms of musician and a zen practitioner and and then you'll see some musical acts and it's you watch them and you say oh, what is going on here they're they're just going through the motions or they're phoning it in and it's the same experience that you might see at another monastery where it's just dead practice um, so just kind of came to my mind as you were talking about that. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. When you when you sit in Sashin and you can feel the energy of every single person there, you 
you can feel how they're all supporting you and you're supporting them and you know like you know where they're at and you know like you said you know the tone you know the mood you know what they're going to do before they do it you get that's when you start to get a real feeling of what sangha is that interconnectedness of people and how we're all working together along the same goal and we're all supporting each other mutually you know nobody's there's no one person there that's front and center and you experience this all this this wonderful cohesion of coming together so that that is another important perspective to take to the uh the forum is that this is this is a giant sangha and we're all here supporting one another in this endeavor and hopefully we're doing a good job at that holding everybody and i think going back to what you what uh jim said and, and you dialed um there's this intimacy and connectedness like you can sit next to someone at a session and you don't know any of their basic facts but you have this very intimate, close, energetic connection with them um, that's deeper than personality. And in, in my limited martial arts experience, it was the same, you know, you step on the mat, you leave your personality off the mat, you do the work. And it's the same doing music. If, if it's all about some one person's ego, it's gonna destroy the music. And I think that's can be confusing to people. Like if you if you haven't, felt that connection, that, that intimacy that's below personality and you just have your personality to bring and everybody and people who have done the training are like, mm, I'm not impressed. You know, there's, there's, it's not about your personality. There's this deeper connectedness that is so important. Um, it can, I, I can see where that can be confusing sometimes. Yeah, and it's very dis difficult to put into words that what, what we're all trying to say, I think. You just have to go to Sashin and experience it. The image of Sashin, I kind of hit on this year that I've been mulling over is like a Viking longship, you know, where everyone's rowing. <laughs> and sometimes you need to take a break. We can row for you. That's no problem. But your hands are still on the oar. You know, you're still with us. That's a really nice feeling when you see that start to gel. I just like Viking images, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> I also think just from my, um, <clears throat> from my own background that um, I was really looking for something that um, I could put all my intensity into. And if there's people out there who are like that, um, you know, can the world take your intensity? You know, can, can it, can you meet, can anything meet that? You know, and um, I would say that my experience that Zen uh, was a was a, a venue to to see it could meet me it could meet me it could go further than me it could go further and so and 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 so I just think that's for, for that type of person who's looking for that um, that type of exploration and um, put all their angst into and and work with it's a it's a real um, yeah powerful um, practice for that um, and, and then it transforms through that. So it's very exciting that you can, you can use a uh, practice to take all of that intensity and, and, and begin to use it. Um, very exciting. Okay. <laughs> uh, anything else today? Any, any other uh, fun stories, goofy stories? Um, you know, this is a pretty funny group behind the scenes. It's just a <laughs> uh, jokes behind the scenes. I'll tell you. So um, you know, I don't know what the, the the feeling is there, but on the page. But actually, th this is a very funny group. So <laughs> no, it's a laugh. Maybe one of our resolutions should be an occasional uh, humor post. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the stuff we share with each other would, would fly pretty well in the forum, I think. <laughs> yeah. People, people that don't know that we have whole conversations for hours with nothing but gifts and yeah, memes, yeah. you know. Right. right. The true yeah. medium. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, 
okay, well, um, no, I think um, really fun. And um, anyway, happy new year to everyone. And uh, does anyone else have anything they want to say before we go? Anything you want to add or um, bring up before we go? You know, as we were talking, I guess the one thing, especially if people from the former are watching this, especially newer people, um, don't be afraid to ask questions. I think that that really spurs a lot of discussion. And personally, for me, um, I learn every time someone asks a question, even if it's something that I think I know the answer to, someone else will post something and I'll think, oh, that's, I didn't know that, or I didn't know that perspective. So um, I think it's really important uh, that people continue to ask, you know, why do we do this? Or what does this mean? Or I heard this. How, how does this address in the Rinzai world? And I think that those are just utterly valuable um, on, on the forum, um, not just for the people that are uh, participants, but also for us, I think, as well. Is that, and I think uh, maybe it was Genro that said that when you have to actually put your thoughts into words and type them out, it really makes you think about, do I really know what I'm talking about? Do I really, am I really committed to putting this out there to four or 5,000 people. So um, yeah, keep asking questions. We, we really enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. Well, wonderful. I guess we'll, we'll see you all on the forum. Um, and um, I guess let's, let's keep it, keep it going. So thanks, thanks everybody for, for joining today and um, for, for talking and letting, I think letting everyone um, get to know you a little bit better. I think that's really gonna be helpful. Um, okay, all right. All right, um, until next time, talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>